Hello, today's video is a beginner's guide to farming. In this video, I go over the very basics and some tips and just talk about the farming skill as a whole. So if you're wanting to get into doing farm runs but have no idea how to start, I've got you covered. There are timestamps in the description if you want to skip to a certain section. First is the very basics, of course. Farming works on cycles, so plants will go to the next stage after a certain amount of time, like flowers and saplings, it's every 5 minutes. It's based on in-game time, not when you planted it, so if you plant a flower 1 minute into the flower farming cycle, like at 2.01, then you have to wait 4 minutes for it to go to the next growth stage. But if you plant it at 2.04, then you only have to wait 1 minute for it to go to the next stage. So basically, if you plant all of your flowers after 2 o'clock but before 2.05, then all of your flowers will finish growing at the same time. It's not super important to know, so don't worry about keeping track. If you use Runelight and want to really keep track of your patches, I recommend the time tracking plugin. There are different types of patches you can use for farming. The most basic ones you can use at level 1 are allotment patches, which grow things you'd probably think of first when you think of farming, such as potatoes and corn. Most allotment patches are accompanied by a flower and herb patch and another allotment patch. Allotment patches require three seeds to be planted, while flower and herb patches require only one. One of these clusters of patches is located south of Falador. You can get here by using an explorer's ring 2 or higher, which teleports you directly to the cabbage field here. You can use a drain or manor teleport and run to the farming patches. or an Amulet of Glory teleport to Draenor Village. Or a simple Falador teleport. The next bunch of patches is west of Port Phasmatis. You can get here by using a fairy ring to ALQ if you have access to fairy rings. After Ghost Ahoy, you can use an ectophile and run west. You can use a Finkenstrain's Castle Teleport. Or a Charter Ship to Port Phasmatis. Another bunch of patches is north of Catherby. To get here, you can either use a Catherby teleport on the Lunar Spellbook, or just a simple Camelot teleport and run east. Some more patches are north of Ardone. The fastest way to get there is an Arty Cloak 2 or higher. Or you could use a skills necklace to the fishing guild. A fishing guild teleport. A combat bracelet to the ranging guild. The fairy ring code BLR. or an arty teleport and run north.
For the farming patches in Hosidius, you do not require Hosidius Favor to use them, but at 50% Favor they become disease-free, meaning your crops here will never die. The fastest way to get here is the Xerix Talisman to Xerix Glade. Another way is the Hosidius House Portal if your house is in Hosidius or if you have a scroll of redirection. Karet's Memoirs to Lunch by the Lansaliums. Tithe Farm Minigame Teleport. Aura Skills Necklace to the Woodcutting Guild. After the quest Great Brain Robbery, you have access to a single allotment patch on Harmony Island. However, there is no farmer to watch over your crops here. There's also a herb patch here, but you only have access to it after the Mauritania Elite Diary. Privzanas, after the quest Song of the Elves, has two allotment patches and a flower patch. Herb patches are where you can plant any type of herb that's used for herb lore. None of these are able to be protected, but a few of them are automatically disease-free. They mostly come with allotment and flower patches, but there are a few on their own. One solo herb patch is on the roof of Troll Stronghold, only accessible after the quest My Arms Big Adventure. This is disease-free, so your herbs will never die here. And one on Weiss, only accessible after the quest Making Friends with My Arm. This one is also disease-free. Hop patches are for growing different types of hops that are used for brewing ales. All all hot patches require four seeds each except for jute seeds, which you only need three. One hot patch is northeast of Lumbridge. The fastest way to get here is using a canoe. Another way is a chronicle, which you can buy from Diango and Draenor. Or just a Lumbridge teleport. Another hot patch is north of Mick Gruber's wood. To get here, you can use a Camelot teleport. or a fairy ring to ALS. Another is in Yanil, the fastest way to get here being a watchtower teleport to Yanil after the Arty Hard Diary. Or just a normal watchtower teleport, which requires completion of the quest watchtower. Yanil House Teleport. Minigame Teleport to Nightmare Zone. Or Fairy Ring to CIQ. Last hot patch is on Entrana, which requires you to not have any weapons or armor equipped, so nothing with stats basically. To get here you can use the balloon transport system after the quest Enlightened Journey. Minigame teleport to the Port Sarim Rat Pits after the quest Rat Catchers.
Explorers ring two or higher. Or an amulet of glory to Draenor. Bush patches you can grow different bushes in. Once they're done growing, you can check their health for a nice XP drop and then pick the berries. Once they're grown, they stay alive forever, and after picking the berries, they eventually respawn so you can pick them again. One bush patch is located west of the Champion's Guild. The closest teleport is the Chronicle. Another way to get there is a canoe. Or a Varrock teleport and run south. One way to get to the bush patch in Remington is the Remington House Portal. Skills necklace to the crafting guild. Balloon transport system, or take the boat from Ardone. The fastest way to get to the bush patch south of Artie is any Artie cloak. All you need for this is the Artie Easy Diary, so I highly recommend this. But another way to get here is the fairy ring code DJP. A spirit tree to the Khazard battlefield. Or an Ardi teleport. Lastly, there is a patch on Etcetaria, requiring completion of the quest from Nick Trials. One way to get here is a Ring of Wealth teleport. Fairy Ring Code CIP. Enchanted Lyre From Nick Sea Boots Or the Relica House Portal. You can start planting trees at level 15 farming by planting them in a field pot and watering them and waiting a few minutes for them to grow into saplings. Once they're fully grown, you can check their health for a big XP drop and can optionally chop them for logs. One tree patch is just west of Lombridge. The fastest teleport being the Lombridge teleport. One is in the Varrock Castle courtyard. The fastest way to get here is the Varrock teleport. Another way is a spirit tree. Or the Ring of Wealth to the Grand Exchange. One is in Falador Park, the fastest teleport being on the Ring of Wealth. Or you can use a simple Falador teleport. 
One is in Taverly, and to get here you can use the Balloon Transport System, Taverly House Teleport, Games Necklace or Minigame Teleport to the Berthorpe Games Room, Goblin Village Sphere after the quest Another Slice of Ham. Falador Teleport. Or Warrior's Guild Teleport on the Combat Bracelet. Last is in the Tree Gnome Stronghold. To get here you can use a Slayer Ring which is bought with Slayer Points. The Spirit Tree. Balloon Transport System. Grand or Royal Seed Pod. Gnome Glider Or Necklace of Passage Fruit tree patches are for trees that grow fruit, such as apples or even things like pineapple plants. Like bushes and normal trees, you can check their health and then you're able to pick them for fruit. The fruit regenerates after a while and you can keep picking from them. One fruit tree patch is located in the Tree Gnome Stronghold. To get here, you can use any of these same teleports as the ones I mentioned previously to get to the Gnome Stronghold tree patch. One fruit tree patch is just east of Catherby and is accessible the same ways as the Catherby allotment patches. One patch is west of the tree gnome maze. To get here you can use a spirit tree teleport. Or the fairy ring to CIQ. The Arty Cloak Monastery Teleport Or running from Arty or Yanil. One is north of Brimhaven, the fastest teleport being the House Portal. Or already teleport and use the boat to Brimhaven. Or a charter ship. One is accessible in Letya after starting the quest Mornings in Part 1. If you don't have a crystal teleport to get here, I don't recommend using the Latya patch at all, because running from Port Tyrus through all the elf traps is really not worth it. There are also spirit tree patches around the game where you can plant spirit trees and be able to teleport to them using any other spirit tree, but that requires 83 farming, and I assume if you have the level you probably won't be watching this guide. Next there are special patches, each of them being for something unique. There are two giant seaweed patches underwater north of Fossil Island, requiring completion of the quest Bone Voyage. 
giant seaweed acts as six of one normal seaweed and is used for making molten glass with the crafting skill. You can start planting them at level 23 and can get seaweed spores to plant them from various monsters on Fossil Island, or by staying underwater and waiting for them to randomly spawn. The fastest way to get here is using a dig site pendant to the dig site, take the barge, and travel by rowboat from the museum camp. Personally, I like to do seaweed after a birdhouse run by running from this northwest birdhouse to the boat. Another unique patch is the Hosidius Finery, where you can grow grapes at level 36. Grape seeds can only be bought from Tithe Farm, which requires 100% Hosidius favor, and to plant them you need to use saltpeter on each patch first. However, they are completely disease-free, so you don't have to worry about them dying. The Mushroom Patch, which is accessible at level 53, is located west of Cannabis. Mushrooms can be used to build a fairy ring or other world theme in your house, or can be used in Moonlight Mead or to make a bowl of sliced mushrooms. The Belladonna Patch is located just west of Draenor Manor and is accessible at level 63 farming. There is no way to protect this patch and you need to be wearing some type of glove to pick Belladonna. Harvesting it gives you Nightshade which is used to make super weapon poison. Eating it damages you up to 15 HP depending on your current HP but will not kill you. There's also the Hespori and Anima patches, which I'll talk about later. At 55 farming, you can plant cactus seeds and 64 farming for potato cactus. You can plant either of them in cactus patches, which there are two in-game. One south of the dual arena and one in the farming guild. There are also special tree patches for unique types of trees. Three hardwood patches are located on Fossil Island where you can plant teaks at level 35 and mahoganies at level 55. At level 72 you can plant a calquat north of Taibo Wanai. Calquats give fruits which you can use a knife on to create calquat kegs to hold up to 4 pints of ale, or you can use them to make super compost or use them on white brudu victims in the Taibo Wanai cleanup minigame to deal a high amount of damage. At 74 farming with Song of the Elves complete, you can plant crystal trees in Prithanas and they can be harvested with an axe to give 8 to 16 crystal shards. Using compost can help increase the yield. Once harvested, it does not grow back and you have to plant another. To obtain crystal acorns, you can either get them from crystal implings or the crystal chest, or by trading crystal weapon, armor, or tool seeds to pennant. At 85 farming, you can plant a Celastrus tree in the farming guild, which gives Celastrus bark that you can use a knife on to create battle staves. Once harvested, it doesn't regenerate, so you have to plant another. You can increase its yield with the compost, though. And at level 90, you can plant redwoods, which give huge XP drops and can be chopped for redwood logs. However, you can't clear the patch on your own and have to pay the farmer 2000 GP to have the patch cleared to plant another redwood. Next thing you need to know is about the tools. A rake is for raking weeds so that you can plant stuff. After level 34, and 100% Hosidia's favor, you can do tithe farm for auto weed, which makes it so that weeds never grow back once you've raked them in a patch. Except of course for the miscellanea patches because you use those to get favor up. The seed dibber is for planting the seeds. A spade is for clearing patches when you have a dead plant or a fully grown one and want to harvest it, or to plant trees. It's also used for removing plant roots in trees and fruit trees. You can even use it to clear a growing patch if you want to plant something else there. 
Those three are the ones you will always take on farm runs. Unless you have auto weed, then you don't need a rake unless you have patches you haven't raked yet. But if you're watching this guide, you probably don't have to worry about that for a while. Also, you don't need a seed dipper if you're just doing trees or fruit trees. You can store your tools in the tool leprechaun, which saves bank space and can be convenient if you forget a tool on your farm run, but it's really just personal preference. You can store things that are noted or with withdraw them from the tool leprechaun as notes. This is especially useful for compost and buckets. Gardening trowels are used for filling plant pots with soil or planting tree seeds in plant pots. Watering cans are most importantly used to water a seedling because without watering it, it won't turn into a sapling. You can also use watering cans to water allotments, flowers, and hops to reduce the risk of your plant getting diseased and dying. Although most people just use compost, or have the patch protected instead of going through the effort to water it every time it's needed, because during the next growth cycle, the plant becomes unwatered again, meaning you'll have to water it again to keep the risk of disease down. Compost reduces the risk of disease by 50% for the entire time your plant is growing, and it's very easy to obtain. It also increases the amount of stuff you get from most patches like allotments and herbs. There are a lot of different types of plants you can use in a compost bin to make compost. You can even use weeds. Or you can buy buckets of compost from a farming shop. There are several compost bins throughout the game, all next to allotment patches. You use 15 compostable items in a compost bin, wait 60 minutes, and then you need 15 buckets to collect the contents, and repeat. Super compost is even better, decreasing the risk of disease by 85%. To make this, you need higher level compostable items such as watermelons and pineapples. Fortunately, you can buy pineapples from charter ships or pick them on Karamja, so really you can make super compost at level 1 farming. This also increases the amount of produce you get from patches. Super compost takes 90 minutes to finish, but if you have access to compost potions, you can make normal compost in a bin and use one dose to make the whole thing into super compost immediately. If you're in desperate need of super compost, you can use a dose of the compost potion on a bucket of compost instead. And the highest tier of compost, ultra compost, decreases risk of disease by 90% and also increases the amount of produce you get per patch by an average of 20%. However, to make this, you need access to volcanic ash, which can be mined on Fossil Island with 22 mining. To make make ultra compost, you need to already have super compost either in a bin or in buckets, but bins are recommended because you can make all of it ultra compost at once and use less volcanic ash per bucket. For a full bin, you need 25 volcanic ash, or 2 volcanic ash if adding them to buckets of super compost. Ultra compost is worth it for things you really want to keep alive, such as herbs and tree patches, because their seeds are harder to obtain, especially if you're an Iron Man. Secateurs are for cutting away diseased leaves from trees and bushes, or can be used to get willow branches from grown willow trees. Magic secateurs are the magical green version of these you can get during the quest Fairy Tale 1. You'll probably see a lot of people equipping them on farm runs because they increase crop yield in herb, allotment, celastrous tree, grapevine, and hop patches by 10% if you have them equipped while harvesting. You don't have to worry about getting these right away, but they are very useful. Plant cure can be bought from any farming shop along with most tools, and you can store up to a thousand in the tool leprechaun. This cures a diseased plant for that growth cycle so it could get diseased again and you can't use the plant cure a second time. This doesn't work for trees or bushes though, you use secateurs for them instead. You can also buy plant cure for a little bit cheaper from the farmers at farming patches instead of a shop. Plants cannot become diseased in the first growth cycle, meaning immediately after it's planted. And no matter how long you leave a fully grown plant in a patch, it will never become diseased or die, so once it's fully grown you can leave it there forever. Empty sacks you can use to store up to 10 potatoes, cabbages, or onions. This is sometimes used for protecting crops. Baskets can store up to 5 pieces of fruit and is also sometimes used for protecting certain crops. 
You can use an amulet of nature to bind it to one patch and wearing the amulet will tell you if your plant becomes diseased, finishes growing, or dies. You can also rub the amulet to check the state of the patch. You can only have one amulet of nature at a time but can change it to be bound to a different patch. An amulet of bounty begins with 10 charges and when equipped it gives you a 25% chance to use one seed instead of three when planting them in allotment patches, consuming one charge. Once the charges are used up, it crumbles to dust and you have to make another. It depends on the type of seed, but a lot of them can be pickpocketed from master farmers. Some can be bought or stolen from seed stalls. You can get varying seeds from different monsters. Bird nests can contain tree or fruit tree seeds. Some implings can also give seeds, mostly nature implings. Vegetable seeds can be randomly picked from fields around RuneScape. Varying seeds can also be obtained from mini games. And another way to obtain seeds is from farming contracts, which I'll talk about later in the video. The best way to get seeds as an Iron Man is birdhouses on Fossil Island, or killing giant mole and trading in the mole parts for seed nests. Okay, now that you know the basics, let's get into actually doing a farm run. This is different depending on what you're planting and which patches you're doing. In your equipment tab, you should have weight reducing gear, matching secateurs and eventually you can upgrade to the farming outfit, although it's not necessary. Beyond that, just have teleports, such as a ring of dueling for the cactus patch south of the duel arena, or a staff of air if you're using runes to teleport around. In your inventory, you should have a rake, spade, and seed dipper. You don't need a seed dipper if you're doing trees or fruit trees. Have anything else you need for teleports to each patch you plan on going to, and the seeds you're going to plant. If you're doing trees or fruit trees, they have to be saplings before you can plant them. You can also bring whatever type of compost you want to use for your patches, or noted items you need to pay to protect your patches. If you're doing trees or fruit trees, you might want to bring GP to pay the farmer to clear the patch, or an axe to cut it down, and then a spade to clear it. Bring anything else you want, of course, like one of the two amulets mentioned before, or a watering can. Go to your first farming patch. If you're just starting out, this will be allotments. The first thing you can plant at level 1 is potatoes, which you can pay to protect with two buckets of compost. At level 2, you can grow marigolds in the flower patch, which protects potatoes from disease as long as there's a fully grown marigold in the nearby patch. Different flowers protect different allotment patches, so take note of what you plan on planting and grow a flower for it first. Remember that if you ever need to see what protects a crop, you can open the farming skill guide in-game, or of course use the wiki. Paying to protect a patch only works for one patch per payment, so if you pay to protect your potatoes in one patch, you'll have to pay again the next time you plant anything in that patch. You cannot pay to protect herb patches, mushrooms, or belladonnas, and flower protection only works for most allotments. White lilies protect all allotments, but they're higher level and very hard to get the seeds for. Use your seeds on the patch, and then use compost. It doesn't matter whether you use the compost first or second, because the patch stays composted until you harvest from it. Once it's planted, you can optionally water it. Though of course if you're paying for it to be protected, you don't need to water or compost it, though compost is still recommended if you want to increase the yield. Then go to your next patch and repeat. Then you'll have to wait for your crops to fully grow. Go back with the same inventory and gear setup as before and harvest your crops. And plant some more, you can plant anything you want. You can note your crops on the tool leprechaun by using them on him with some exceptions. You cannot note nightshade, logs, white tree fruit, rotten tomatoes, or specifically cabbage at the Falador farm because the tool leprechaun here is tired of the cabbages since there's a large cabbage patch close by. Or instead of noting them to make inventory space, you can take your produce to the nearby compost bin and use them to make compost. 
If you don't have enough to fill up the bin completely, you can just leave it until your next farm run when you have more stuff grown. I recommend keeping buckets in the tool leprechaun and grabbing out 15 whenever you want to gather compost, and then storing the compost in the tool leprechaun again. This just makes it a lot easier in my opinion. It doesn't matter what order you do farming patches in, but personally I use the time tracker plugin on Runelight and just kind of go down the list, except I always do the farming guild last because it takes the most time since I do farming contracts, the spory, and make compost there, and it's nice to end up somewhere close to a bank. Here are other ways to get certain types of produce if you need them for crop protection or just for compost. You can collect potatoes, onions, and cabbages in fields around the game. You can obtain apples from spawns in the Cook's Guild, a spawn in the farming shop north of Ardone. Buy them from the food chest in the Lumbridge Castle basement after starting Recipe for Disaster, or get them from barrels of apples on the pirate ship that goes to Lunar Isle. You can get bananas from the banana trees on Karamja or buy them from charter shops or other shops around the game. You can buy oranges from two different shops in the Grand Tree. I kind of mentioned this before, but you can buy pineapples from charter ships or from the Grand Tree, or pick them on Karamja, or obtain them from monster drops. And you can get tomatoes from certain spawns around the game or buying them from the Grand Tree or the Lumbridge Castle basement chest. If you want to be efficient, I recommend doing the quests that give farming XP as soon as you're able to. Herbs and hops are the best to grow for profit, while trees and fruit trees and special tree seeds are the best for XP. Giant seaweed and belladonna are the best to grow for the farming pet chance, which is still extremely rare. For context, most people don't get the pet before 99 farming. At level 45 farming with 60% Hosidia's favor, you have access to the farming guild and farming contracts. What you do is talk to Jane near the entrance and ask her for a farming contract. When you first talk to her, there's a bit more dialogue than what is shown here because I've already talked to her about contracts. She will assign you a plant to grow, and once you've completely grown that plant and checked its health or harvested it, you get a reward which is a seed pack containing a random assortment of seeds. The higher level farming contract you do, the better the rewards are. However, if you choose a higher level farming contract that you're unable to do or don't want to do, you can ask for a lower tier contract instead to skip it and get something easier. At level 45, you only have access to the central area and the beginner wing. In the center is a bank chest, the seed vault which stores seeds if you want to save bank space, and a few different farming shops. There's also a spade and bucket spawn here. In the beginner wing to the east, there is a master farmer, a tool leprechaun, a farmer who you can pay to watch over your patches, a cactus patch to the north, two allotment patches, a flower patch, and a bush patch. You can get a farming contract for any of these patches, but they will always be things you have the level to grow. Here is also a big compost bin, which you use 30 compostable items in instead of 15, and grants you 30 buckets of compost. Personally, I recommend only using this bin instead of any of the others around the game once you have access to it, because it saves you compost potions, and it's just a lot easier to manage because it's so close to a bank. I like to make compost here after every farm run, and this always gets me slightly more compost than I use the entire farm run, so I never run out as long as I keep making compost every time in this bin. The intermediate tier to the west requires 65 farming to enter, and contains a herb patch, a tree patch, an anima patch which you get seeds for from Hospori, and the Hospori cave where you can plant and fight the boss Hospori. I won't do a full guide on Hospori, but basically, kill the flowers when they're awake, spam click away when Hospori traps you in vines, and have an anti-poison ready. Hospori seeds are randomly obtained when harvesting plants around the game. 
Planting a spore doesn't require anything besides the seed. It doesn't become diseased or anything and takes 22 to 32 hours to grow depending on when it's planted. You can see when a spore is fully grown or its current stage by the flower outside of the cave. A spore drops some nice stuff like random seeds and always drops some type of anima seed and has an uncommon chance of dropping the bottomless compost bucket which stores up to 10,000 uses of one type of compost. And each amount of compost you put into the bucket is doubled, meaning you need 5,000 buckets of compost to completely fill it, which can be noted, or the equivalent obtained directly from a compost bin. Anima seeds should pretty much always be planted as long as you have access to a spore and are regularly doing farm runs. The Atta seeds increase the yield of your crop. Iazor decreases the chance of becoming diseased by 80%, and Kronos gives a chance for your patches to skip a growth stage, making them grow faster. Anima seeds affect all patches worldwide, not just the ones in the farming guild, and the advanced tier to the north requires 85 farming. This wing has another bank which is even closer to the patches in the tool leprechaun, a fruit tree patch, a spirit tree patch, a celestrous patch, and a redwood tree patch. There's also a sleeping cat you can pet. There is an efficient way to do farming contracts by already having certain things planted because some plants are more common to be assigned than others. I won't go into detail about that in this video, but let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. I won't explain how to do tithe farm in this video, but here are some of the rewards that are useful for farming around the game. The farming outfit gives a total of 2.5% more XP from farming actions when worn. In the long run, it doesn't save you that much time to get it before 99 farming, but if you want to get it anyway, I recommend getting it sooner, especially because the early levels from doing the tithe farm minigame are nice. Greek Holder's Can is a watering can that holds a thousand doses of water and can be refilled from any water source. The seed box holds up to six different stacks of seeds and may be useful for doing Slayer to save inventory space. The herb sack holds up to 30 of each type of grimy herb, which is also useful for Slayer or when hunting herbivore. You can also use it for farm runs because herbs harvested automatically go into your herb sack. You can also buy a herb sack from any Slayer Master for 750 points, so it just depends on which you prefer doing. That's it for the video, I think I covered all the bases. Feel free to come back to this video anytime you need to remember something or to ask a question in the comments. I hope this guide was helpful. Thank you for watching and good luck on your farming adventures. Goodbye!